Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy Kay Facebook Live. And today I'm going to show you how I made a card with the Christmas Barn Stamp Set Bundle, which is one of the bundles in the current July to December uh, 2022 mini catalog. And it's really a it's a pretty bundle. And uh, hopefully you like my card. Like I said, I had fun putting it together. I kind of I saw a card that was actually. I can't even remember who made it, but it was like a boxed Christmas card that I saw out on um, Pinterest somewhere. And I'm like, oh, I think I could recreate that and make it into a card for, you know, with the Christmas barn set. So that's kind of where the, the layout and design came from uh, for this card. So it's pretty simple and easy. Um, I'm sure you probably cannot see it, but I did add a little Wink of Stella on the, the roof of the barn as well as the snow around the barn. So I don't know if the sparkle shows up at all on the video, but it is there, I promise. Um, <laughs> so, all right. Hey, Mary, thanks for hopping in. I'm glad that you're joining me today. So, um, so again, that's the card we're going to be making. Uh, the stamp set is Christmas Barn is the name of it. It is a photopolymer stamp set, so it's see-through, and that makes it easy for stamping. And and um, hey, Debbie, thanks so much for joining today. So there's some good sentiments in it. Again, good Christmas scenes. You could definitely turn it into a winter birthday card or something like that and just change up the sentiments a little and maybe leave the wreath out. Um, but I think it would work for that as well. So hey, Vicki and Pam and Karen, thanks for joining. It's such a pretty set and the dies are really pretty. They're pretty awesome, I think. <laughs> so um, so this is the die set that coordinates with it. Obviously the open images here or the open dies um, cut out the stamped images. So there's one for the wreath, the tree, the fence, the barn the horse um i think that's oh and then actually this one cuts out the sentiment the merry christmas to you and yours um so it's one of those that kind of fits tightly around the sentiment and then there are some accessory pieces so we've got these things that i think are supposed to look like snowflakes but i don't know anyway you can use them however you'd like so hey merrily thanks for joining and Lori as well um, and there's a fence die, there's a silo die, and then this I think is supposed to look like either ice, like a pond kind of thing, or I think you could use it as snow. So either way, however you'd like to use it, um, you definitely can do that. So it's a great stamp and die bundle. Again, it's available in the uh, current mini catalog. So uh, hopefully it'll carry over to the next catalog, but we shall see. Hey, Darlene, I'm glad you found me. So I do have to apologize ahead of time before I get started on this. As Hey, Ruth Ann. Um, I picked up a little bit of a sniffly bug when I was in New Orleans over the weekend. So apparently airports, you know, traveling, being around about 600 of my best stamping friends. Somewhere along the line, I picked up a little bug. So um, I do apologize if I'm a little more nasally sounding than normal. And I'm going to try really hard not to have a coughing attack. But <laughs> if I do, I have a drink close by. So hopefully, um, maybe I should just stop yakking and then I probably wouldn't cough. <laughs> But anyway, all right. Hey, Barbara, thanks for joining. Um, all right, so a couple of reminders. Celebration is ending tomorrow. Hey, Gail, and it is such a pretty stamp set bundle. So celebration is ending tomorrow. There are a couple of new things, a couple. I know that these um, are already sold out. Uh, the hippo dies are sold out. They're, the cards and envelopes from Celebration are sold out. The tree lot dies are sold out. So things are starting to go, and there may be other stuff too. Um, so get on your Celebration orders as soon as you possibly can uh, to get your last sets of free items. Um, there are some items that are $50 level and some that are $100 level. So that means that with an order of 50 or greater, you can start picking from the free $50 level. And then with orders of 100 or greater, you can start picking from, you can pick either from the 50 or the 100 or mix and match, uh, kind of depending on uh, where your order lands. So let me know if you have questions about that. Again, celebration ends tomorrow, which is August 31st. So get your orders in soon so you don't miss out on that. And then starting September 1st, Hey Trudy, yay, Stamp It Up has got some new dies and bundles that are starting. So, <coughs> so yeah, I told you I was gonna try not, I'll try not to hack straight into the camera. So um, they have got some new uh, bundles and dies that are coming out on the 1st of September. So these are all coordinating, uh, they're all current stamp sets that are in either the annual or the mini catalog right now. And Stamp It Up is just bringing out some dies that coordinate with them for the month of September only while supplies last. So if these are dies that you are wanting or bundles that you are wanting, get on ordering them soon in September so you don't miss out. Um, so these are all of them. There are six bundles that are gonna be available starting on September 1st. They're available now for, 
for demonstrators to order. Um, so if you're not a demonstrator, consider joining now during celebration. You get the free uh, planner, and then you're also gonna, you know, you can pick these bundles and or the dies uh, as part of your starter kit. So, I mean, if you have questions about that, I would be happy to chat with you more about it. Um, all right, so these again, September 1st, are gonna be available for customers to order, and they're all really cute, and uh, yeah, just get them all. <laughs> oh, one other thing I forgot to say, if you already have the stamp set, you can just buy the dies, but Stampin' Up! for this promotion is also offering these stamps and dies in a bundle for 10% off, so yay for that. If you don't have them, then get them both. All right, uh, World Card Making Day, our team is doing an event. You'll be finding out lots more information much closer to the event. Um, it is Saturday, October 1st. Just wanted you to put a note on your calendar. Our team event runs from about 9 in the morning Eastern time until 9 in the evening Eastern time. And then there's a Stampin' Up! event that's kind of stuck right in the middle of it. Um, ours is going to be a Facebook event, so we'll be posting um, projects and sharing card ideas out on Facebook Live with you all day long, every hour on the hour. And then um, Stampin' Up! is also doing a World Card Making Day event that's kind of right in the middle. They're going to be going live from, I believe it's 2 to 5 Mountain Time. And they're going to be presenting some projects as well. <coughs> so ahead of the event, uh, Stampin' Up! actually has got some bundles that they are going to be letting you order. And if you order one of the bundles, you will get a free pack of iridescent pearl jewels, the basic or iridescent pearl basic jewels, um, as a little bonus. Um, they've also listed out here the projects that they're creating if you want to create with them they've got um, projects listed out or got the items that they'll need to create the projects listed out here at the bottom of the the little sheet here the cottage rose and cottage wreaths bundle you can get now and get your free pearls now or if you want the warm welcome bundle which is a new one from the upcoming january to june 2023 can hardly believe that um, mini catalog that bundle is going to be available starting on september 1st through october 1st um, as an early release item, and you'll also get the free pearls if you order that bundle. So let me know if you have questions on any of that. The details are on my blog, so um, you can go check it out either today uh, on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com, or if you go back and look at the details about this card project um, when it posts tomorrow, the details will also be in the blog post with my card project. And then finally, Stampin' Up! let us know that they're doing this awesome new weekly deals. Um, if you have been around for a little while, you may have remembered a couple years ago they did some weekly deals for a while. They're bringing them back just for the month of September. We haven't been told what any of the deals are, so don't ask me because I have no idea. We'll all find out on September 1st what the deals are. Um, but they're going to change deals every week. And um, so just be on the lookout for that uh, starting September 1st. So let me know if you have any questions about any of that stuff. Um, um, otherwise, let's get going on the card and hope that I don't start hacking. Okay, so I did pre-cut some of the things ahead of time so that um, save us a little bit of time, hopefully, on this. And let me grab a drink before I get started. It's coming back. Oh, the weekly deals. Yep, they're coming back for just for the month of September. So, um, all right. So I'm starting with Shaded Spruce Ink. This is a piece of basic white cardstock that is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, so it should fit perfectly on the front of a card, hopefully if I've cut everything correctly. Um, I did this before I left for uh, uh, New Orleans, so I'm hoping I remember what I did, and I don't make a total mess. Sometimes when I do things too far ahead, then I can't remember what I've done, and then, you know, it's a mess. <laughs> All right, so Shaded Spruce Ink. I'm gonna stamp the little tree image a couple times here across this panel of cardstock come over here and do a couple of them on this side as well all right okay so we've got that part done and i'm going to close up my ink pad before i make a mess and set it off over here then i'm going to grab a blending brush and soft suede ink um will they say what the deals are in advance nope we just have to wait till the week of on the first day of the, the week, it will, uh, they'll show us the new deal. So I wish they'd tell us ahead of time, but nope, I guess they want us just to, it, to be a surprise. So, <laughs> all right. So I've got soft suede ink and a blending brush, and I'm just adding a little bit of soft suede ink around the edge of the panel. Um, if you don't like the look of the soft suede ink, because I know some people do like it, some people don't like it when you add a little bit of shading around it. 
Um, you don't have to do this. You can leave it just plain uh, white on the edges or if you wanna use, I don't know, pool party or some sort of a lighter kind of bluish ink or something like that, you could definitely do that as well. Um, I did soft suede, I don't know, I thought it gave it a little more of a kind of a vintage feel that I was going for um, with the card that I was putting together. All right, I think we're about good. Just wanna make sure, try not to have any globs of ink anywhere. All right, so I think we'll call that good. And then close up the soft suede ink and get my blending brush out of the way here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get um, this little piece stamped and adhered to this panel because that kind of the placement of everything is a little dependent on where this thing lands. So I want to make sure that I have this piece uh, done and ready to go and on my card uh, before I do anything else. So this is a piece of basic black cardstock and should be cut to about one and three eighths by about four and a quarter. And we're going to do some heat embossing. So everybody's favorite to listen to the racket um, is you know, heat embossing. Um, I've got the little embossing buddy from the embossing tools kit. <coughs> and got um, sentiment and Versamark ink. And we're going to heat emboss the sentiment in white with white embossing powder. Um, the reason I use the embossing buddy on this is to try to make sure that, oops, I'm going to slide this down just a little bit and try to line it up here so that I hopefully can get it stamped on here sort of straight. All right. Um, use the embossing buddy on the cardstock panel. Um, so, whoa, I don't think I got, yeah, I don't think it's as bad as I thought it is. We'll sprinkle the embossing powder on it and see how it looks. If it looks all kinds of crazy, <laughs> I'll flip it over and do the other side. Um, hey, Jeannie, thanks for hopping in from Delaware. Um, so use the embossing buddy just to make sure that I didn't have any, um, hopefully don't have any stray, or just throw it right on in the bowl. That works too. I guess that's one way to do this. <laughs> um, just the embossing buddy helps to keep the kind of stray flecks of embossing powder uh, off anywhere where I don't want them to be. And it also stops the embossing powder from sticking to places where I've stuck my fat little fingers on it and left fingerprints. So, all right, let's close up the... Um, embossing powder and the white embossing powder comes from the basics embossing powders um, that is a set of three it's black clear and white and they come in a little set together for embossing powder so i pulled out the stamp it up heat tool if you do not have the stamp it up heat tool it's a good one it's got two settings on it the level one setting is for drying so if you're doing something like watercoloring and want it to dry a little faster <coughs> Um, the paper to dry a little faster or using a kind of a slower drying ink. Um, you can use the level one setting. The level two setting is for heat embossing, so it gets a little bit hotter. Um, so I'm just giving it a second to um, heat up and hopefully it will get hot here in a second so we can start the heat embossing process. And we're just going to turn it here and then just wait until it starts to turn shiny and smooth. Um, the white's pretty easy to tell because it starts to turn a really bright white when it's done cooking. You want to make sure you keep your heat tool moving a little bit um, so you don't accidentally burn your embossing powder. And then give it a second to cool down before you touch it so you don't accidentally smear it. So, hey, Terry, thanks for hopping in. It was nice to meet you over the weekend, by the way. Hopefully you didn't pick up the coughing, snotting business that I've got. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to adhere it to the bottom of this panel of cardstock. And I'm going to use, you can either use seal or liquid glue. I'm going to risk it and use liquid glue. I usually don't, but... I'm afraid that, you know, about the time that I don't, then I will stick it down and it'll be all sorts of crazy and I won't be able to wiggle it around and move it. So, all right, so let me stick this together here and try to get it lined up and straight. All right, I think we've got it. And give it a little press and let it dry for a second. So, all right, now I'm going to grab my... Oops. Oop, this is the one I want. Tuxedo Black Memento ink. I have ink and stamps laying all over the place up above me. So <laughs> I'm going to grab another drink quick while I'm... Oh, and I totally banged into the table. All right. <clears throat> Sorry again for the stopping and drinking, but I figured that's better than coughing uh, straight into the, <laughs> the mic. So, all right, Tuxedo Black. And then this is the little image that looks like uh, prints to me in the snow. So um, that is what I use them as. So I'm going to ink this up with Tuxedo Black and then stamp it right here along the edge of the little panel. 
Um, so again, the reason I waited until after I adhered this is just because I wanted to know where this was going to be so that I could make sure that I ended up with this stamped in the right place. All right. Yeah, it's one of those things, you know. <laughs> I was due for one. I hadn't had, a, you know, a bad sniffly thing in a while, and now I've got one. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, let me grab next a little bit of the gingham ribbon. This is the black and white. I see I've got black ink on the side of my hand. That'll be all over everything in no time. Uh, so this is the black and white quarter inch gingham ribbon, and it's really pretty. And uh, again, I thought perfect for kind of a vintage Christmas card. Not really something that I think of that would scream Christmas when I um, use it, but uh, I thought it worked for this one. And then I'm just going to wrap this around and going to attempt to tie a bow here. Hopefully I'm still on the screen. So um, made the little initial cross over there and then we're going to wrap and do the bow. Hopefully if I can get my fat fingers out of the way. Let's try that again. Some days bows are easier than others and today is not one of the easy days. <laughs> All right, there we go, yay. Okay, so then I can take this now that I've got it tied and kind of wiggle the and maneuver the bow around as needed. And of course my um, ribbon scissors are not laying here handy, but um, I've got paper snips. So Karen, look away while I hack at the ribbon. And let's take this one, we'll trim this off because I got a little, a little overzealous on the length of it. So there we go. All right, got our ribbon put on there. And I may even trim that up a little bit more. Um, uh, is it, I'll probably do all the Yeah, I think it was probably just, you know, there's just stuff going around and there were enough of us there that things happen and it's all right. <laughs> I'm not gonna die, I promise, I'll, I'll survive. Like I said, I may cough and sniffle a little, but I think I'll be all right. So, all right, so now that I've got this put together and I've got my bow wrapped around here, I can go ahead and adhere it to the front of a thick basic white card base. And just using a little bit of liquid glue here to stick the two together. And there we go, we'll get these lined up so that hopefully it'll be on the card front straight and in the right place. All right. Give it a quick press to make sure everything is smooshed down well. All right, let me set that aside and then we'll do a little bit of stamping and a little bit of coloring and then we'll be out of here. So, all right, I know the wrong scissors. I can't help myself, Karen. <laughs> One of these days you're gonna to have to come over before I set things up so that you can pull all these things out. I was happy that I remembered my die cutting machine and the heat tool today. So I'm not running around like a crazy lady <laughs> pulling those things out as I'm trying to talk and be live at the same time. That was a lot of fun the other day, um, not at all. <laughs> all right, so I've got Tuxedo Black Memento ink and I'm stamping the barn image in that. And then we are gonna ink up the little horse image, the horse and sleigh image. Again, tuxedo black because we're going to be coloring that with Stampin' Blends. We'll stamp that up here. And then we've got the wreath image. We're going to stamp that in um, shaded spruce ink. And I don't know if um, we're going to color the bow on this. I'm, I'm sure that I've probably told you this before, but if I have not, you can actually use the Stampin', the regular Stampin' Up! inks and um, color them with um, Stampin' Blend. So we're going to be doing a little bit of that today. And then the final thing is the fence image, and we're going to stamp that in Crumb Cake ink. Again, just stamping it on the basic white panel here with all the other little images. And I'm trying to stamp them far enough apart that I can run everything through with one swing through the die cutting machine. So that's my goal with it. Um, hopefully I've done that correctly. So, all right, <coughs> let's start coloring. So the bow is gonna be first. We're gonna color the little um, bow on our wreath. And I've got light and dark, real red Stampin' Blends markers. I'm gonna start with the light and we're just gonna color in um, super awesomely, you know, again, you'll be amazed at my fantastic coloring skills um, or lack thereof. And all I'm doing is just adding a little color to the bow. So again, starting with the light, I tend to prefer to start with the light colors of ink or light colors of blends and then go to the darker and then blend the two together. But if you prefer to go the other way around, you can certainly do that. Whatever is your, whatever works best for you is, you know, the best thing. So. 
Some of us do it um, this way, some of us do it the other way. So whatever works best for you, you know, works for everybody. So, all right. Next up, we're gonna do a little coloring on the barn and I'm gonna put the dark away before I accidentally start coloring uh, everything with that when I don't want to. Again, I'm gonna start with a light Stampin' Blends marker. Um, the barn is a pretty big image, so it may take me a second to color it all in. Um, again, I'm kind of coloring, trying to trace around the edges so that hopefully I will keep it mostly within the lines. Um, some days I do better at that than others. But tracing around the little barn doors and in between the little barn doors. Um, and I just left, you don't have to, you can color them whatever color you'd like, but I left the little accents on the barn white, just what your standard issue kind of red and white um, country look barn. And I'm actually gonna use the color lifter. Whoop, I just googed that one. Huh? So I'll try the color lifter and see if I can get it to push the, the color out of the way since I made a mess. Um, put a coat over here. So I'm gonna be using the color lifter on the, once I get everything colored in um, with the red Stampin' Blends to give it a little bit more, um, I don't know, kind of a, again, the vintage look, a little more depth in the color. So um, that just makes it look a little more uh, washed out, I guess, a little more old barn look um, if you use the color lifter on it after you've colored everything in. So, and if I miss it, you know, if you feel free to go ahead and leave a comment um, if I'm missing them as I'm coloring because sometimes I get um, busy coloring and uh, don't look up for a second. Uh, just know that I'll hopefully catch it and answer the question. And if not, um, I'll catch it later on. So, all right, again, I've got the light Stampin' Blends marker real red that I'm coloring the barn with. And we did have a good time in New Orleans. It was, um, it's uh, an interesting city, that is for sure. Lots of good food, um, lots of training materials. It wasn't your typical Stampin' Up! event where we did, you know, the stamping and the, the new catalog and all of that. This was a uh, training event for Stampin' Up! leaders. And uh, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had a good time, got to meet up with a lot of uh, stamping friends and meet some new stamping friends. Uh, some people that I've met online only and um, got to see them in person. It's the first in-person event we've had since 2019, which feels like forever ago. <laughs> so um, why are most barns painted red? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess so that they can be seen easily. I don't know. I'm not a, a barn expert. I know uh, I grew up on a farm and actually the barn that we had was painted red. I don't know why. Um, there's probably some logical reason for it. I just never really thought to ask because they were just all red. <laughs> so, hey Mary, thanks for hopping in. Hope you're feeling all right today. I'm a little sniffly still, as you can tell, but uh, generally I think I'm gonna survive. So, all right. Um, it definitely was a good time. Like I said, I'm I'm very glad we got to go ride together and uh, hang out together for the weekend. And Jamie was there also. She's one of the team members. And um, so, yeah, so there were three of us from the team that got to go, and it was a lot of fun. Definitely looking forward to uh, next year they're going to do it in Las Vegas, so we'll be uh, sweating it a little bit there. <laughs> Probably worse than it was in New Orleans, um, but it'll be good. It's always fun going to a Stampin' Up! event. And thank goodness they have air conditioning. So we were, you know, mostly inside anyway. So the fact that it was 9 billion degrees and 8,000% humidity really didn't bother us one bit. <laughs> so at least it didn't bother me. So, um, all right. So adding in a little bit of dark, uh, real red Stampin' Blends, um, just coloring in, kind of adding a little shading here and there. And then I'm gonna come back in with the light and we'll try to blend a little bit together again. Um, red is to protect the wood from getting fungi, insects, and rot. Huh. All right. I learned something new today. I have no idea. Well, I'm glad that Google was able to answer it for us because, like I said, I know our barn was red, but I have no idea why. <laughs> I never, it never occurred to me to ask. So, all right. Just using the uh, light real red to add, you know, kind of blend things together a little bit and add a little more uh, shading in here. All right, I think we're almost done with the coloring of the barn. And then I'm gonna come in with the color lifter and 
just do just do some kind of random scribbly coloring over the front of the barn to kind of lighten it in certain areas and again you don't need to do this in any special way there's no secret to it it's just a matter of taking the marker scratching over the color on it um, and lifting the color anywhere where you think it will be a little bit lighter and again i have no rhyme or reason as to what i'm doing or why i'm doing it i'm just coloring and liftering is that a word color liftering um, and then there are a couple spots where i got a little wild with my coloring and my liftering so i'm going to try to color the um the little uh white accent pieces here back to white again because i yeah i made a little mess on a couple of them had a couple of coloring boo-boos all right and i think we will call that good for the barn um, the other thing we have left to color is the uh, the little sleigh and the horse and the people. Um, so I've got light and dark smoky slate that we're going to use to start coloring. Whoop, I'm going to use the bullet point end. So I'm going to use light smoky slate to color the sleigh first. And then I'll come back in with a little bit of dark to add a little bit of shading in there. And whoop, let's see, we'll put a little dark in there, a little dark around here. Call that good. Then we'll do a little blending together here, try to even it out just a little bit. And forgive me again, I'm going to grab another drink. <coughs> and try not to sniffle and cough right into the, the camera. All right, I've got Shaded Spruce Stampin' Blends. I'm gonna color the little hat on this person. And the blanket. Color, again, I've got, this should be the light. Hopefully that's the one I grabbed, yep. And then the scarf on the person on the other side. And then the little mitten on this person. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of the dark. And again, whoop, I'm using the wrong end again. All right, a little bit of the dark around the areas where I think it's going to be shaded a little bit. And come back with the light and do a little bit of blending. There we go. All right, grab the real red again <clears throat> and color the scarf on this person. Try not to color their face. Um, and I put red pants on this person. I don't know. Red pants are probably not really a thing, but they are in my world i wanted it to coordinate i didn't care that it looked a little weird that they were red pants but all right they're festive we'll just say that all right gonna add a little bit of the dark real red back in there and then i've got crumb cake oh cool i'm glad you're liking it like i said it's a really pretty set i really i like the the um details on it all the little stamp or all the little um die cuts and all that i think they're awesome it's a great great bundle so all right so i've got crumb cake I'm um, using the light to add a little bit of color for the jacket on this person. And then also the jacket. I don't know. I think it's a long coat on the person behind. At least that was my theory. I'm sticking to it. And come back with a little bit of the dark. And mostly did the, I think I just colored the hair dark. And then maybe just a little bit, a little bit of dark um, on the coats. And then blend it together just a little bit with the lights gives it a little more definition in the color. Um, the horse, I actually colored the most of the horse with the light Stampin' Blends marker, or light Stampin' Blends crumb cake, I should say, marker. All right, we'll add that. And then um, I did the horse's tail and mane in uh, dark crumb cake. All right, almost done with the light. So add a little bit of extra shading here down underneath the horse, um, around the belly, around the legs. And again, just doing it with the, the um, light marker instead of coming back in with the dark, because I'm going to color the, the mane and the tail with the dark so that there's some good contrast. All right. And I really swear we're almost done coloring. I knew it was going to take me a minute because it's kind of a lot of little... <laughs> little bitty coloring, but um, it's not terrible. Like I said, I mean, I'll probably have it done and the card done in maybe 20 minutes. So it's not a bad one. 
Um, that was light so saffron that I used to color the, the reins and the harness or whatever they call them on a horse. I don't know. Um, and then this is the uh, from the light blends pack. So these are the skin tone markers. This one in particular is the SU800. Um, and that's the one that I used to color the faces on the two people. And then I've got somewhere over here, I've got uh, basic black. Uh, light and dark stampin' blends, and that is what I use to color the little boots so that hopefully they don't look like the sled. And I think that's all the pieces, so I think we're done coloring, finally. <laughs> so, um, why do I color before I cut? Eh, I don't know, that's just the way I do it. If you do it the other way, that's just fine too. So, um, definitely gonna be using it good, good. Um, only exceptionally black on the horse because yours is black. That's awesome. I can't wait to see it, Jenny. <laughs> all right, um, so I'm gonna grab the dies here that coordinate with all the stamped images. Got the one for the barn, whoop, got the one for the little horse. Got the one for the fence, here we go. The fence one is actually pretty easy to line up because of the way that they have put the little, they've they cut it so that it's open over the posts so you can see how to, to get everything lined up correctly. And then we've got the little one for the wreath. And I'm gonna take these over and uh, run them through the die cutting machine. So. And hopefully y'all are enjoying your Tuesday. It's uh, a warm one here in uh, New Jersey. My younger daughter has started back to school. The older one starts next week, so. Everyone's excited about that. Well, mostly me. All right, let's get these cut. All right, I'm gonna grab the dies. Whoa. Sure, I'm gonna grab them. Get them put back on my sheet here before I lose track of all of those. And then I'm gonna grab my little die cut pieces here. Whoop, maybe. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna stick those on the card front, add a little Wink of Stella and we'll be done. Um, all right, so you can use whatever you prefer as far as the um, adhesive goes. Um, I think that I actually used uh, uh, multi-purpose liquid glue on mine. And um, so you can use that or you can use uh, your glue dots or whatever it is that you like. So, all right, so I'm just kind of laying this out to make sure everything is going to fit on here the way that I want it to, which I think it is. Kind of needed to know where things were going to land so that I could put the barn in the right spot. All right, I've got stamp and seal that I'm going to stick the barn on with because that's a big wide image and easy to stick down. The only thing that's a little uh, tricky about this one is just making sure that your barn is angled the right way so you're not, the, the ground does not go straight, <laughs> if that makes sense. So the ground kind of tilts down. If you put the ground so it's straight, your barn is going to be leaning in a bit of a strange direction. So there you go. Got that one done. And then I'm going to put a uh, stamp and seal on this part of the, the fence, the wider, uh, thicker part here. And then a little bit of liquid glue down the little posts so that I can hopefully not stick my fingers in it. Oh, and actually before I do that, I need to add my Wink of Stella so that I don't have to try to go through the fence post to do that. All right, so I'm just adding Wink of Stella. There we go. Over the, what would be the snow part on the, the ground here around the barn. And then also going to add it to the rooftop, which again, I know you can't probably see it. I can see it when I'm putting it on. You can definitely see it when it's in your hand, but probably not so much on video. And I know it shows up not at all in the photos. All right, there we go. Now we can put the fence on. So we're going to take that and stick it over here along the edge of the card and on the front of the barn. So Oh, I'm glad y'all are liking it. Like I said, I think it's a great set. <laughs> and then we've got our little wreath. And we're going to stick that on with a little bit of liquid glue. And we'll stick that so I think we'll cover up that top window. And stick the wreath on right there. 
And then I'm gonna grab some Stampin' Dimensionals to put my little uh, uh, sled, sleigh. I was gonna call it a sled. Again, I'm like, that is not the right word. That is not a sled, <laughs> the little sleigh. Um, so these are my little dimensionals that I cut in half. You can definitely use the mini Stampin' Dimensionals if you prefer. The full size ones may fit on it, but probably they might be a little tight. So in, I would probably either cut them in half like I did or use the minis. All right, one last little thing that we're gonna stick on here is a um, rhinestone basic jewel. And we're just gonna put one of those over here next to the sentiment and we will call it done. Uh, I am gonna trim up, I think a little bit on, uh, again, Karen look away because I've got my knot ribbon scissors and you know, again, one of these days, one of these days, Karen, I'll get it all straight and you know, then I'll forget where I've put everything. So, oh, oh. I thought I was gonna cut it. There we go, okay. Ooh, ooh. And that I did cut a little jaggedy. So I will uh, have to definitely trim that up with my real ribbon scissors in a second. So that's it for the card front. Again, pretty easy, pretty easy, I think. So on the inside of the card, kept it pretty simple. Just got a sentiment to add. And I'm sending rhinestones flying everywhere because I accidentally um, grabbed a hold of them with my fingernail, which I didn't mean to. <laughs> so, all right, got um, real red ink and the sentiment. I know you're gonna, you should start sending me a, a reminder, <laughs> and I'll still probably forget. Um, so this again is the sentiment from the uh, Christmas Barn stamp set. I'm gonna try to get it on here straight. There we go. I think I did all right. And I've got a piece of the Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. This is, I don't know, it's about three quarters of an inch. Yep, about three quarters of an inch. And this is just a piece I trimmed off, a six inch panel that I had, so it's way too long. Um, but I knew it was gonna work for what I needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of stamp and seal on here. Actually gonna put two rows across since it's a little bit wider of a panel. And then we are gonna line this up, hopefully along the bottom and trim off the extra so that it's even with the edge and then stick it on the inside of the card and we will be all done for today. So let me know if you have any questions about anything. Again, all this will be posted on my blog tomorrow. The blog post will go live around eight o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. And uh, I will link it up in this video. So you shouldn't have any trouble finding it tomorrow if you wanted to take a peek at the measurements or any of the details for the card or any of the promotions and specials that I was talking about today. All that'll be posted on my blog tomorrow. Um, as well as the details for this card. So uh, let me know if you have questions on anything. Um, hopefully you like this. And like I said, just go get the bundle. You'll be sad if you don't, and then I don't want you to be sad. So get the bundle, you'll like it. You'll have fun playing with it. It's really pretty, all sorts of things you can do with it. So there you go, card is done. Uh, let me know if you have questions on anything. Uh, and I am planning to be live. Hopefully I won't be hacking anymore on Friday around two o'clock Eastern time on YouTube. And then I'll be back here live around two o'clock Eastern time next week, Tuesday. So again, don't forget September 1st, we got the uh, perfect partners, which are the new dies as well as weekly deals starting. And don't forget tomorrow is the last day of celebration. So let me know if you have questions. Um, we'll chat with y'all soon.